What's up, traders and investors? I want to talk about Bitcoin, one of my favorite things to talk about. I love Bitcoin. I'm even wearing a shirt about it right now. Why am I qualified to talk about Bitcoin and should you take it over someone else's opinion? Well, I've literally been there, done that, and gotten the t-shirt years and years ago. I've seen just about every pump and dump of Bitcoin in the last decade. And it's taught me a few things. Now, what I'm going to say in this video is going to make a few people mad, maybe a lot of people, because I'm not going to paint a rosy picture for the bullish case for Bitcoin. I will tell you where I think Bitcoin is a good buy, but a lot of people aren't going to like it. Spoiler, it's not now. Now, again, why... Should anyone listen to me about Bitcoin? Why not listen to someone like this guy on Twitter, uh, BTC Fuel? He has tens of thousands of followers. Why am I picking him? Why am I picking on him? Well, it's because on January the 23rd, I got shared by a friend this post, this thread, where he was talking about how the Bitcoin season was about to begin, and it had thousands of retweets and thousands of likes. Well, I decided to go back and see what was this guy talking about in the fall of last year? What was his expert opinion on Bitcoin? Well, it was Bitcoin to 800K. And of course, someone that puts out information like this is going to get into this circle of confirmation bias. The bullish cases for Bitcoin are going to float to the surface, and those are the ones that if you just take a cursory look across the internet, you're going to see and read. Now, I don't particularly care if anyone agrees with me. I'm a contrarian by nature. So the fact that a lot of people disagree with me is often very good for my positions. So I'm totally comfortable with that. But you have to be very careful the information you get. And that's why I said I'm going to ruffle a few fetters with this video. Back in the fall of last year, October 31st, 2021, I noticed something, and I put it even in all caps warning, Bitcoin and Ethereum, the major players, were failing to break out. What you needed to see, what you wanted to see in the fall of last year for people to achieve their financial goals, for Bitcoin to actually go up into those six figures that they wanted, was a sustained buying, a breakout, a confirmed breakout. Very simple, no fancy technicals. More people needed to keep buying it, and they did not. And I rang the warning bell to people that this is not a good sign for the bulls. Well, where are we today? We're in this malaise, this slow, boring period that is just grinding on people's nerves. And no one knows if they're going to be the crypto millionaires they thought they were going to be or not. Well, I've got some more bad news for you. There is a very likely chance that the price of Bitcoin as it stands is within another bearish cycle. That might be scary to some people. The former CEO of Arthur Hayes had this article published about a week or two ago. He predicted a coming crypto carnage. And in that, he said that Bitcoin could crash to 30,000. Oh, no. That's a 25% drop in Bitcoin. That's bad. But is that perhaps optimistic? Let's take a little trip down in history. This is not something you're going to see in other videos. No one really wants to go back and look at Bitcoin's history and see what the past events have held. Instead, what they'll do is they'll say, this time is different. Hold that thought for later. So one thing we can do to look up the long-term history of Bitcoin on TradingView is if we type in BTC USD for the symbol search, and we can look for the all-time history index, which is compiled by TradingView. It's a very useful tool. And let's go all the way back on the weekly, and let's look back in time. Let's go back to 2011. Okay. What does this look like to you? It looks like any old penny stock, doesn't it? 
comes down at 92 cents, goes all the way up to 31, and then crashes back down. That's so familiar, isn't it, when it comes to price action? Hmm. This time is different, but let's just do some measurements. So let's measure from the peak to the bottom and see. We had a 93% drawdown, and it took 161 days to get there. All right, let's hold that. Now let's take a look at the next big pump and dump. From a high of $266 down to 65, a 75% drawdown. It took about 84 days. Then we had another one in 2013. This was a big one. I think a lot of people started getting in in 2013. That's where you started to see a lot of the chatter. Well, that top to bottom had a very prolonged bear cycle. Keep this in mind. 86, almost 87% drawdown. And it took 630 days. It's almost two years. Then we have 2017. 2017 had a high up here, down to a low. There was an 84% drawdown, and it took a year, 364 days. Well, now, where do we sit using these same metrics? Right now, from the all-time high that it's set in November to here, where we are right now, is 41% drawdown. Not as bad as all the rest, but if we look back in time, and if we're going to make any sort of educated guess for what the bottom of Bitcoin may be, we need to look at history. We need to throw out this whole, this time it's different, this time there's institutional involvement. Wait, I said I'd talk about that. You know how they talk about institutional involvement, microstrategy, Michael Saylor, all that good stuff? Where do you think they got that money? That money is borrowed. That money is the product of the low interest rate environment that we've been living in. There's a lot of people that I know that have taken out equity lines of credit to buy crypto in the last year. Is it really different? Or is there actually a tremendous amount of leverage being put in like at any other point back in history? rhetorical question. So if we look at it from the perspective of historic trends, from top to bottom, the best case scenario is a 75% drawdown from the high. The worst case is let's give it an 85%. So where does that put Bitcoin? Well, a 75% drawdown from the high down to the low well, the per perceived low, that would put it somewhere around 17K. The more dire 85% drawdown would put it somewhere around 10K. So if you're buying Bitcoin right now, here is what you need to understand. You may be getting into the future of money. You may be getting into the only sound money out there. You may be getting into something where its scarcity is what's going to make it infinitely valuable. But your risk is anywhere from 50%. That would be a pull down, a pullback to 17K, as we said, about 55%, or down to 10K. 73%. That is your risk profile right now at this price. I really want to find Bitcoin at a discount, just like anyone else does. And I think a lot of people have bought into this narrative that the economy is going to crash, the dollar is going to fail, and the only thing people are going to want to have is Bitcoin. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. There's people out there that believe this. Okay, They believe that Bitcoin is the only sound money, just like gold. And the countries, institutions, banks are going to be forced to hold this as the inflationary fiat system we have and enjoy falls apart. Okay, here's the problem with that. If you give someone a Bitcoin today and they are hungry, a lot of them will refuse to buy food because they might think that it will be worth a car next week. They may even continue to go hungry because they may think that car will be worth a car, excuse me, a, a house the next month. 
People don't spend deflationary currencies. They just don't. And the economy will seize up just as it did on the gold standard in the early 1900s. People don't really take the time to really go back in history and look at the causes of these events. We don't have a perfect system, nor did we at any point. But to, the idea that we're going to go to a Bitcoin standard would literally be a disaster for the world economy. Sorry about that narrative to dispel it. When could such a deflationary event in Bitcoin occur? That is a very good question. In the event that we have some sort of major risk deflationary event, Bitcoin is going to be affected hard. It is not immune. In fact, it is all the more impacted by the risk-on, risk-off nature of our current market. And that's been seen very evidently in recent history. Let's look at this. COVID. Do you remember that COVID thing that we had uh, back in uh, 2020? Does anyone remember that? Okay. I, I remember. Bitcoin dropped from its high on February the 10th, 2020, down to the low, 63%. The COVID crash made Bitcoin go down 63%. By comparison, we look at the SPY, the SPY, the S&P 500 ETF. The S&P 500 ETF dropped only 35%. Pretty bad if you had stocks, but you actually lost on paper, but you lost twice as much on Bitcoin. It's a riskier, more volatile asset. The 180-day historic volatility right now, as of making this, on the SPY is about 18.8%. Let's call it 19%. The realized volatility on Bitcoin right now, as of making it over the past year, is 49%. Of course, it's been higher, but it's going to be going down as it's consolidated. But the volatility of Bitcoin is roughly two to three times higher than stocks. And it's not going to be immune from some sort of deflationary event in the world economy. And so if you are thinking that we're going to go into a recession, if you think that we're going to see a big crash in the stock market, it really stands to reason, if you just look back in history, that you're going to see a similar event in cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. In fact, it will probably be an even more exaggerated move. And so where does that put us today? Well, there I've given you the worst case price targets and the sort of timing event to look for when is a good buying opportunity? To me, it doesn't matter if Bitcoin goes up to 200, 300K without me. I've seen every one of these events. I know with historical certainty that at some point it is going to retrace 75 to 85% from its all time high. I also know that it's going to be highly correlated and more volatile than every other risk asset out there. And so in the event that we have some kind of a major economic crash, whether it's this year, next year, or within the same statistical frequency that we have it once a decade, cryptocurrency will also be on sale. So there's no rush for me to buy at these prices. And I don't believe that Bitcoin offers this absolutely irresistible bullish case that you have to have it now. I'm going to wait until you no longer have this bullish case. I'm going to wait until the Twitterverse has stopped talking about Bitcoin. I'm going to wait until everyone has written it off as a big giant scam, just as they have four times in the last 10 years. And then I'm going to be looked to be a buyer. But I could be wrong. 
And for a lot of my friends, I honestly hope that I am. But until then, I hope that you'll trade and invest wisely. We'll see you in the next video.